Well, we switch our attention now to developments in Nasarawa State. Well, you do know about all of those reports we get about the impeachment, the panel set up, the comments from the Nasarawa State House of Assembly. Well, we'll be going over to Abuja Studios now where uh, Hamza Mohammed joins us. He's the Commissioner of Information there. Morning. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, yes, first of all, those allegations from the Nasarawa State House of Assembly about how the panel went about acquitting the governor, they say that it is, first of all, wrong. They don't accept it. Well, start by telling us their comments about the composition of that panel. The, Nasser, the State House of Assembly says that there were men there that were of questionable character who should not have been in that panel. They still stuck to their guns about that. What can you tell us about it? Uh, we have no comment with regards to the... Cons okay. We have no comments with regards to the constitutional requirements that uh, enjoins all stakeholders in the impeachment process enshrined in section 188 of the of the constitution the speaker of the house of assembly the house of assembly as a whole the chief judge of nasarawa state the panel constituted by the chief judge all have specific roles assigned to them and as soon as every stakeholder completes his uh, role, he becomes functus official. As soon as the House of Assembly writes through the Speaker to the Chief Judge to constitute a panel, they have finished their role. It is enough for the Chief Judge to constitute a panel. And there are judicial pronouncements with regards to the fact that you can challenge any action of any stakeholder be it the house of assembly the speaker the chief judge or the panel if you feel their actions do not conform with the provisions of the constitution especially section 188 so for us we the onus is on them to go and find judicial interpretation about whether the action taken by the chief judge or the action taken by the panel was in conformity with the provisions of section 188 especially with relation to the responsibilities assigned to either the chief judge or the panel you talked about and uh, i go to subsection yeah. uh, five it says with within seven days of the passing of a motion under the foregoing provisions of this section the chief judge of the state shall at the request of the speaker of the house of assembly appoints a panel of yes. seven persons who in his opinion are of unquestionable integrity not being members of any public service legislative house or political party to investigate the allegations as provided in this section and then the members there say one they've got one Mohammed Sabo Kena who is a member of the PDP from Kena They've got Mohammed Usman, PDP from Kefi, and then they have this Reverend Joel Galadima, who is a member of the Christian Pilgrims Board, who in their records drew salaries from the government, the state government, as at June this year. But all those, they don't matter? Yes, they don't matter. They don't matter as, so, as long as the court do not find their accusations as true. As long as the courts do not find their allegations as true, it doesn't matter because as far as the situation is concerned, the chief judge appoints a panel. If they have any problem with the panel, they do not have any constitutional right to question the composition. The only right they have is to go for the interpretation in the law court to determine whether the members, their allegations on the members of the panel are true or not, and not to arrogate to themselves the power of interpreting the action of the chief judge with respect to the composition of the panel. I do not want to uh, talk on the composition of the panel, on the, uh, whether a member is qualified or not qualified, because 
it is the duty of the court to determine whether a person is qualified or not qualified. What about section 188 subsection 7, where it, it reads that a panel appointed under this section shall, A, have such powers and exercise its functions in accordance with such procedure as may be prescribed by the State House of Assembly. Well, they also say that they did not give the uh, panel the procedural guidelines, and then they went on a voyage of their own. What, well, it, okay. in the same vein, in the same vein, the House of Assembly are still arrogating to themselves the power of uh, withholding guidelines that they are supposed to have issued to the chief judge to give to the panel for it to function and exercise its powers. The section, as you read, said, as may be prescribed by the House of Assembly. There is a condition there. If the House of Assembly gives a, a, uh, a guideline, so be it. If it doesn't, the panel, as in my understanding of this subsection, can regulate its conduct by issuing a guideline to that respect. Because the constitutional provision said the guidelines as may be prescribed by the House of Assembly. Your principal was quoted as describing this panel as an illegal panel, yet he appeared before the panel. Doesn't that mean he sort of authenticates that illegal panel? I cannot remember uh, the governor of Nassau State describing the panel as an illegal panel. I can only remember the governor complaining about some of the processes, especially initiated by the House of Assembly to commence the process of removal. Such processes as the process of presentation of the notice of allegations and the process of serving that notice of allegation to him. It was not served to him. Even the one that was advertised in the papers did not contain detailed particulars as required by subsection 2 of the Constitution, of that, sub, of that uh, section 188. Okay, so, well, do you remember the governor saying that he, he was not served? And so, uh, to that extent, I mean, if you say you were not served, why would you then appear before a panel for which you don't even have details of why you are appearing? Yes, you see, we are in an era where the law is taken as an ass, where there is impunity everywhere. If you remember the Adama, Adamawa example, the governor had cases, had issues with uh, the initiation and the processes taken by the House of Assembly to commence the impeachment proceedings, and therefore refused to appear. And what happened? He has now got to go to the law courts to seek back his mandate. The governor has a reputation to protect, and he feels by appearing, he is achieving two things. He is saving his name and also providing an opportunity for the panel to see uh, in truth what uh, his defense are, defenses are. And uh, in this case, it does not stop him from challenging some of the illegal processes that went through in the initiation and uh, process, pro procedures that are enshrined in Section 188, which have been breached by the House of Assembly. Before now, um, we know that you know, the State House of Assembly had always been populated by members of the opposition party. What had been the relationship between them and the governor? Yes, we have not been having it smooth, as you have been uh, watching from the inception of, uh, from since his assumption of office. We've been having running battles with them. These are uh, acts of them legislating and seeking to execute. And just yesterday, you remember, they were saying that even the court cannot tell them what to do. That has been their posture all through. They have, they have passed several frivolous resolutions, several laws that are anti-people. Some of the laws are 
uh, very strange, like the one-year tenure of, for local government councils. They have passed resolutions asking the governor to seek permission from them before he travels abroad. They have passed resolutions inviting even a DJ of a radio station to appear before them. They have passed resolution asking the governor on several occasions to appear before them. They have passed resolutions declaring payment of minimum wage as illegal when the governor, because it was going to be uh, uh, a problem to their party if he keeps, uh, if he succeeds in paying the minimum wage. They have passed several legislations and resolutions that are obviously unlegislative, obviously anti-people. And any attempt to educate. Mr. Mohammed, are you saying then that every time that the governor has been invited to appear before them, or, yeah, to appear before them in the, in the chambers, he's never been there? He's been there. He has been invited. Whatever he, they invite him, he goes there. But he's normally invited for, for frivolous issues. Like the last time he was invited, he was invited to come and explain why as visitor of the university, he has not visited the university.